How about we move on to the post-event situations? Uh, so that mm -hmm. would be Darian. Can you explain to us post-event situations with the site condition, please? So just like when you when you showed up to a site, um, getting out of the site is the same as showing up to it. When you see something at the site um, on your way in, you took photos of anything that was off. Do the same on the way out. If you think that if you know that something, uh, clean everything up first. Make sure that there's no mess. Uh, make note of what was broken when you showed up. Make note of what was broken when you left. Um, make sure to be upfront and honest about that. Um, I've seen sites that say, oh, that got broken. It's unfortunate, but we perfectly understand you've been here a dozen times and it's the one, it's the one off. That's your freebie. We're good with that because you came to us. Uh, we've left scuff marks in the gym at Confederation that I thought we were going to get in trouble for. And the janitor just said, thank you for letting me know. I'll run the buffer before I leave. Have yourselves a great night. And that was, that's the last I ever heard of it. And, uh, a guy went sliding across the floor in, in studded plate mail and left a nice, you could see it. Ooh. <laughs> um, I, I thought we were, we were done for. And the janitor just said, no, nope, I'll take care of it. Thank you very much. Have yourself a great day. Alrighty then. Owning up to something will get you further than trying to cover it up. Communication. Um, <laughs> yeah, communicating again. Uh, and if you try what, to cover it up, we could get screwed. Please yeah. don't do that. Especially if you're under our liability insurance. Please do not do that. We talked about rentals earlier. Um, sorry, Admiral spoke about the rentals earlier. And the... Um, you don't just rent space. Sometimes you rent equipment, like renting uh, the lights for bought the the porta potties, the garbage bin. What condition are you leaving that gear in? Uh, if you rented the lights, if it came with a full tank of gas, you return it with a full tank of gas. Um, the last thing you need is after you've done your P and L, which we'll talk about later, your profit and loss, to have. Um, we usually go with North Rock Rental and Supply here. Uh, and to have them call you up and say, hey, so you owe us a $50 tank of gas. Well, you've already turned everything over. And now you have to go through an all thing and ask for more money and make sure that you return things in the same condition you got them. And once again, if something went wrong or something happened, own up to it. Um, Clear expectations from the rental company. It's usually in the contract. Mm -hmm. Make sure to pay for all of your rental gear. Um, and I, I say that especially for myself, because uh, I, as Chancellor of Wolvenfang, have gone, had people get in contact with me in January because rental equipment from Bot D hadn't been paid for seven months after the fact, or six months after the fact, sorry. Mm. And um, that almost cost us uh, service. They almost refused to do business with us in the future. Um, the first thing I did is I, didn't, I never denied it. I said, oops, sorry, we will take care of that. We'll make it right right now. I never debated it. You take care of your contractors because they are, um, without them, you don't have the gear without the gear. It's just not happening. Uh, a lot of, could you imagine uh, Bot D without the Porta Johns or the garbage bin? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I don't, it's not a nice dream, though. <laughs> <laughs> so the last people I want to annoy are Ray's Enterprise because we need those things um, make sure make sure make sure you pay those and the last thing you want to do is after the P&L find out that you forgot to pay for $800 worth of Porta Johns kind of a surprise bill for you uh, make sure you make note of any damage to the site rental equipment and if you're going to use the insurance, you're going to want to talk to the board. You're going to want to make sure that you discuss it with your local park, with principality, and with the board. Because there may be options. There might not be options. But if we call on that insurance, the costs are going up. Um, and there's other factors to be considered. And who may be held personally liable is also a conversation that might have to happen. And once again, above board people are more willing to say it's unfortunate 
but we're willing to live with it. Trying to sneak things past, people are more likely to say, not letting you get this one by us. So definitely be above yeah. board and definitely um, make note of how things are and return things in the same condition they started in. I, I see both of you. Uh, I was like, <laughs> she's first. Or she first. <laughs> So just uh, I got her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, don't know, I don't know the layout. I think you're up here. <laughs> I'm, I'm like I'm above you. I'm like I'm pointing to you now. <laughs> um. Yeah, there you go. It's me. <laughs> you found me. Um. No, just real quick. Uh, just because I have uh access to the stream chat. Uh, just uh a good note that was brought up. Um, by Lord Valiant. Uh, make sure you know how to run the equipment, um, like the lights, for instance, right? Um, don't have somebody do a thing that they are not qualified or have knowledge on how to do because then you're almost guaranteeing that they will break, right? So for mm -hmm. liability reasons and things like that, um, know how it's, how it's operated and make sure that whoever is doing it has the proper knowledge or training to be able to function those things. Sorry, go ahead. That actually reminded me of something. Um, and th this is a bit of a, a trucking thing more than anything. Getting things to site. Make sure, make sure, make sure when you're dealing with your contractors, how to get them to the site and how to get them back from site are both discussed. Um, we had um, one year we had rented the lights from North Rock Rental and there's different, there's actually different types of truck hitches and the autocrat didn't think of that at the time. And the, the type of truck hitch that was on the lights, I think my truck was the only one with the actual hitch type to hook up to it. Um, and he didn't think of how he was going to get it back. The, the person who dropped it off uh, only stayed for the Saturday, was gone, and we had to get that back on the Tuesday. It sounds silly, it sounds simple, but if he had to wait another two days for that guy to come, that's $100 a day. That would have been $300 more than we had intended to spend. So uh, make sure getting things to and from is planned out. And if people are picking things up, be there for the pickup and the drop-off. Lisa. So I'm just going to reiterate. Um, I know you had said with the liability insurance, um, you as autocrat, you requested the insurance. Um, you were responsible. Don't expect that your monarchy is going to speak on your behalf. It's great if they do. Um, it doesn't matter. You're responsible. Bring it to the board. It literally, if it has to do with anything to insurance, straight mm -hmm. to the board. Like, yeah. your monarchy technically doesn't have anything to do with it unless they were uh, the person running the equipment or whatever. So just to clarify, um, anything legal or liability, straight to the board of directors. Side note right now, it's still in flippant that you would be bringing that to or Wilbur. Um, so that's just current of 2020, what are we, June? June 2020. So if you're watching this five years in advance, mm -hmm. don't go to Dylan. <laughs> but right now, go, go, to, go Dylan. to Dylan. Always go to Dylan. So, yeah. <laughs> always, I actually... always you, because you're going to have the information. As autocrat, you're going to have the information of the damage. You're going to have all of the um, receipts and the bills and the company and everything and, and probably the communication. Um, you need to directly hand it to the board. That, that brings me to another, just reminded me of another thing. We're going to be talking about it when we do security and medic, two of the more common ones you're going to have damage with or possible insurance claims. Reports. Um, people need to make notes of things. They have to hand them off to you. You have to know what happened because you could have been sleeping at the time and somebody decided to tackle someone uh, in a port of john and damage it. Um, there's someone in the chat right now I know knows that this has happened and was a witness to this. Um, oh, this is <laughs> something that there, there was paperwork. We knew who it was. We knew who was involved. We knew what happened. And if it goes to insurance, they're going to ask these questions. Who was involved? What happened? Why was this damaged? Who's at fault here? Very good questions that need to be answered. With medics, uh, they're going to want to know who got hurt, how they got hurt, what they got hurt on, what were they doing when they got hurt, and what did you do to treat them? 
because if it gets gangrenous, eh, that's something that uh, they're going to ask, well, what would you do to treat them? Why did you not have them looked at by a paramedic? You have to substantiate some stuff and make sure that you have that as the autocrat after the event. You have that written down from somebody because people misremember things, people forget things. Make sure it's in writing. All good stuff. Sorry because for the doom and gloom talk. No, uh, <laughs> it's it's an unfortunate thing. There's going to be a lot of unfortunate things. And also conditions. We've had broken ribs at Bot D. We've had uh, bruised knees, uh, dislocated uh, joints. Um, people getting into physical altercations in the outhouses. Heat stroke. Weird things happen. <laughs> Concussions. Sorry? There's a huge <laughs> stroke. Concussions. Help to me. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. But the huge thing is the the liability. Like one of the bigger ones is heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Um, us as a, a organization, if we see it and we don't call it out, we're liable. Um, if we tell them, okay, you're done, and they keep playing, then that's a personal choice. We have to visit, like, we cannot let them play, but if they go off on the side and start ditching on their own, and we've already told them not to play, that's documented. We're no longer liable. They're the idiot. They didn't take the advice. You know what I mean? Like, we need to keep everybody safe. That is that is the intention. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Okay. Are we on leftovers? Yes. Leftovers. Yep. If you're good with... With that, I can move to leftovers. Fantastic. Okay, leftovers. Um, there are going to be things at the end of this event. You have to know where they go. Um, so, lost and found. Um, the people are going to leave things behind. They're going to leave tents, they're going to leave chairs, they're going to leave weapons, all sorts of stuff. So, collect everything, have pictures of everything, and post the pictures online. Some things you're going to know who they belong to. Um, and try to help facilitate those being returned. Um, make plans. Uh, but there's going to be lots of things that you have no idea whose stuff it is. Um, so make sure you, you have that logged and you have pictures and you post them on the event page and go, Hey everyone, whose is this? Uh, some folks might be like, Oh yeah, no, that's my Squire's thing, right? You might know... Um, and they'll be able to do that, and then you can open up that communication and figure out um, whether or not there is a way to get it back to them. In some cases, things end up getting thrown out, right, with the person's permission, right? They're just like, ah, it's a broken chair anyways, just throw it out, it doesn't matter, right? Um, but having that communication, knowing how that works. Um, but there's going to be some cases also where um, there are unrealistic expectations to return it, right? And at that point, right? there's got to be some communication of um, what happens to those items. Um, surplus supplies. <laughs> oh, Lisa, yes? I was going to say, with Lost and Found, um, personally, I'm going to add this to uh, my event. Um, if it's broken, it's getting thrown out. I'm not keeping it. Um, uh, one point after tactic, uh, no offense to the player uh, who did this, um, I had an entire armory that I had to bring to Linagon. Uh, I literally couldn't bring any of my own gear that time that I went to Linagon because I had so much Linagon gear that I had to return. Um, please make an effort. Make a list of the stuff that you bring to an event and then double check it before you leave. Um, don't leave garbage. If it's broken, throw it out, please. Um, at the end of the event, your event staff is really tired. And the last thing we want to do is go through the entire site and find all your broken lawn chairs and your broken weapons and find out that you've left your entire suit of armor just sitting out in the sun and now we have to transport it. And honestly, we're all really nice and we will do it the first couple of times, but if it becomes a habit, honestly, at that point, we're going to make you send the gas to come back to get it. Bot D... <laughs> Oh, if it's gross, I will also throw it out. Side note. If it's gross and dirty, I will throw it out. I am not keeping dirty laundry. If you leave, um, for whatever reason, a torn and gross, disgusting 
sweaty something. I'm not putting it in my car. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's your fault. You lost it. Be an adult. I'm too nice. Pick up <laughs> Um, the the garbage and the empties with Bot D, we usually spend about four ish hours after the event's over and everyone's off site to pick up all the garbage at the bases at the at the um, camping rowdy fire, and the number of beer bottles one year that I picked up um, and took back, I think we totaled something like seventy dollars worth of empties, so that's ten cents a bottle. That is seven hundred bottles that were left on the site. Um, I, I probably should have mentioned this in site condition, but that's not respectful to the site owners. And don't get me wrong, I, 70 bucks towards our budget. Totally. Bring them to troll. We will happily take your empties back for you. <laughs> that's $70. That's a tank of gas for the cytocrat. Thumbs up. Please don't make us go hunting. <laughs> yeah. If it's garbage, put it in the garbage can. If it's empties, bring it to the troll. Let them keep the cash. Um... If, if it's dirty laundry, please either take it home or throw it out. If it's a, a tent, please take your tents down. Yeah. I've had to take people's tents down because they left them behind. Yeah. And they weren't broken. <laughs> they wanted them back. Yeah. Um, that's the thing too, right? Uh, make sure that you have bins um, in locations that will often, you will find large mm -hmm. amounts of garbage, right? So, like the fire pit um is a good thing right your wherever feast is that's good um and just like make sure that there's bags available um but yes as as event goers please 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 be considerate of the site be considerate of the staff who's volunteers that then have to clean up after you um be kind to your volunteers because we have a culture where we're not very kind to our volunteers um leaving trash everywhere is something that then someone else has to deal with um we're adults please be be respectful and um pick up after yourself <laughs> um <Yeah>. that <laughs> Sorry, i feel like i got a little heated there i was like i'm not your mother please take your laundry home jeez <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a hassle. And also, right, there's going to be times also where, um, especially if you're going out to an event where you're, it's not local, right? There may not be room in people's, like, the staff's vehicles to get stuff off the site, right? Because a lot of times their cars are going to be packed to the max getting essentials to the site. Um, they, they might not have room for your tent that you left there, right? Where it might just be a, it's here, please pick it up, we cannot get it to you, right? We have, you do, do not have the room to take care of it. You left it, that's not on us now, right? Um, so be aware of your items, right? A checklist of all your items is a great idea, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, pick up after yourselves, you're dead. <laughs> um, right, so surplus supplies. There's going to be things that... Um, you bought multiples of that aren't being used. Um, if you have purchased any items yourself, so it didn't come from the site budget um, or the event budget, it didn't come from the treasury, let's say you just donated these things. If you pay for a thing, you may take the thing, right? Uh, if I buy walkie-talkies for an event for folks to use, the, those then come back to me. Right? If that did not come out of um, the budget, that didn't come out of the treasury, that didn't, it was just, I, I bought these of my own accord and let you borrow them. Those come back to me. Um, so anything that's like that, because it does happen a bunch, um, make sure anything that is borrowed or, um, again, rented um, from others is getting returned to them. So that's kind of how that works. Now, a lot of parks will have... Um, like a storage thing of, of um, things for the park, right? Um, some people have feast kits and things like that, um, loaner gear, whatever. Um, if, if the surplus items were purchased by the park, those need to go back to the park. That is now a communal park thing. Um, so that, that needs to be stored and that needs to be given to them so that it can be used at the next event or whatever for the park. You don't just get to keep those. Those don't become yours. 
Um, now, there might be some cases to where it's like, we don't want or need these things, we don't have the storage for them, it's up for grabs, if somebody wants them, take them, right? If, if uh, the whole event is done and there's a bag of Oreos left over, right, um, you could just be like, I don't want some Oreos! They'll be taken. <laughs> there's someone will want the Oreos. Just saying, I will probably want the Oreos. Yep. Please offer them to me. <laughs> Where did the Oreos come from first? That, that's oh, my well, word. If it's, an, if it's an unopened package, I'm just saying, Oreos are delicious. So we actually Suspicious literally Oreos. had that at well <laughs> Clash of Talons, not this year, but the year before. Um, it was, there was a, a thing for um, an indoor quest thing that we had um, that involved Oreos. Um, it was like a, a game where you had to like um, get it from like your forehead, I think, and get it into your mouth. It just like, it was I'm like a so minute. Or, that game. Yeah, it was like a oh, minute or win it game sort of different. thing. And yeah, so so we, we had a lot of Oreos left over. So it was just like, help yourself to some Oreos. Staff that's cleaning up after everyone. Oreo, Oreo, anyone? Oreos? Right, cause it's like, we're not going to take the, the already opened bag of Oreos and put that in, like, a feast kit somewhere to... Yeah. Right? <laughs> a half-empty thing of Oreos. Yeah, you, you don't have to worry about, oh, this was purchased by the thing. That must go back to the... Mm -hmm. There's going to be some things where it's just, like, has some Oreos. <laughs> um, you see that a lot with also leftover feast stuff, but that's another class. <laughs> um, so that's surplus stuff. Um... Oh gosh. So, uh, dissolution of assets. Um, I feel like okay. I feel like that's a, a thing that you'll be covering in P and L and stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that for you. I'll leave that for you. <laughs> um, I, I think we already covered most of that. Yeah. I, who gets what? Um, which are they borrows? Who takes good? Yeah. I think that's everything on my list, actually. Um, if anyone else has any other things about leftovers, go ahead. But um, if you have quest items and stuff that are left over, that let's say you did spend money on them, uh, think about auctioning them off and raising money for your park. Because there might be some really cool and in intense work that like some of your players have put into these things, and they would like to, you know, as they like. Um, I know with Bati. Uh, yep. They auction off the flag, right, for the team, which I always thought was a really cool idea, and then uh, that money goes back into the duchy, right? Right? Am I wrong on that? Oh, no. Uh, no, no. Some do. Some do. Yeah, um, yeah no, yeah. I was at a Bati where um, they, they ended up auctioning off a lot of the props and costumes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it went really good. I actually want a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> so then I was like, I was like, ah, I now have a quest kit. From my park, right? Like that, my park can now right. use, right? So I just, mm -hmm. yeah, I bought a whole entire thing, and it was just like, sheep is a giant bag. So also, right, it was one of those things to where it's like, we don't have room for this, right? Um, this is just so much stuff. We we can't take it back with us. We're gonna auction this off and raise money towards the event. So it was, yeah, that's definitely an option. Um, right, and that's also right. Have that already predetermined, um, right? Because if mm -hmm. it's things to where, like, uh, it's, like, now loner weapons or loner garb or something like that, like, the park wants to keep those items, right? They paid for them. They should be able to keep them sort of thing. So you mm -hmm. need to have that communication, right, to see what the park is okay with um, being let go or auctioned off um, or donated or um given away right um you do not want to be in a situation where the um the park puts in a whole bunch of money to have things built like maybe like structures and things like that like like uh breakdown um terrain stuff and things Collapsible like that terrain yeah that could absolutely be huge for the park in the future for future events or even just field days um where you then just like, oh yeah, if anyone wants to take it, right? And that doesn't go back to the park, but they paid for it. Mm -hmm. That's an issue, right? Um, so that is not something that you get to just, right? That's not something that you purchased. Um, 
and something. Also, that also clear out with the craftsman to. or woman that that made that thing, because if they if they're under the impression they get to keep it after the project's done and after the event's over, they might get a little offended too. So, yeah. so know what you're doing and do it up front. Yeah. Always communicate. The answer is probably going to be communicate. <laughs> But yeah, no. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. It seems to be a theme, right? Communication. <laughs> Repeat stuff. Listen Communicate. <laughs> You're the communication crat. Yep. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> um, but that's all of my stuff for leftovers. So all we got left is the financials, P&L. Um, mm -hmm. Again, this is going to be our last section. If you have any questions for anything that we've covered so far... Um, again, please stay tuned for um, next week and possibly the week after that for um, the other crap positions. We will be teaching those, um, and they will be extremely shorter than this class. Apologies for that. It's a lot okay. to go over. Yep. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> um, Getting the lion's share of the work done first, and then we'll go into the, the other more compartmentalized jobs. Yep. <laughs> yeah, completely. Yes. Um, so again, please tag me um, so that... Uh, we can answer any questions, right? Again, 20 second delay, either in, in the Twitch chat or in Discord. So please, this is your last chance to answer, to ask those questions. Um, and for right now, we will get to the P&L financials. Lisa, this is all you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try and not talk about this for an hour, but I could talk about this for an hour. Um, <laughs> I have a document. It is called a profit and loss. Um, I have a pretty, pretty good staple document that, surprise, surprise, Ken made, <laughs> and that I've proliferated to, um, a lot of my chancellors. Uh, Dennis is, is privy to my profit and loss, or I'm going to say Ken's profit and loss. Um, I've just been using it for, um, a long time. And, um, what it is, it, 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 it's an Excel spreadsheet. Um, I'm probably going to post a link somewhere where you're able to access it. Um, it's very editable. And I think it's easy to use. If you had any questions, you can always ask me about it. Um, but it has different tabs. So it has the main tab, uh, which will total up all of your profit and loss. You know, cool, yeah. Um, and uh, there's subsequent tabs. I don't have it pulled up right now, but I know that there is a quest tab a seat tab, um, a site tab, others tab, and um, a receipt tab. Very important. Um, as a side note, I'm just going to backtrack a second. As the autocrat, it is your responsibility, not the trollcrat, it is your responsibility to submit the profit and loss. Um, it's no longer in our corpora. It's going to be, if I have anything to say about it, you have two to four weeks to submit that before their repercussions. Um, yeah. This is a liability thing. This is, uh, we need them. Uh, we are a business. Uh, everything needs to be documented. Um, so with a profit and loss, what you're doing is you're documenting every expense in detail that you have spent money on for this event. Um, man, I wish I had a like little PowerPoint or whatever to explain all of the things. Um, you can't really just say, I mean, you can. I don't like it when you do, if I'm looking at them. Uh, if you say thief and just put in an end cost, um, I'm not going to accept that. I need to know what you bought, why you bought it, where you used it, and I need receipts to prove that you bought it. There's a tab for that. You need to scan in those receipts and put them in the profit and loss. Same thing with Quest. I need to know why you bought it, what you used it on, and I need a receipt to prove that you bought the thing. Um, that's why you can even write into it, like if you have stuff that's donated. So as a Feastocrat, it's very, it's on a regular basis that I donate whatever spices I use. I'm not going to buy three pounds of salt every time I do feast. There's no point. I have a ton of salt and sugar in my pantry. I'm going to use it. Um, unless I'm using an insane amount. So chances are what I will do is I will log that uh, on my profit and loss donated by Faywell and into the cost or whatever. Um, at the end, you should, the Excel spreadsheet, it does all your calculations for you. It should tell you exactly how much you made from the event, 
questions, you can put in um, how much you spent, or sorry, how much the troll is, um, and then you input the amount of people that came. Uh, you can also add extra lines to be like, okay, so only day trippers came, or, or this is how many day trippers came, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's, it's just, it's so easy. It's an Excel spreadsheet. It's so good. I just, I love it so much. Um, <laughs> and there's tabs for everything. There's even an others tab. So like, uh, there's one for a site fee. You would add in mm -hmm. like porta potties that go with the site fee. Let's say they don't have potable water. Um, or extras would be like, we needed to buy extra water that went for battle games. Every penny that you spend on an event needs to be documented and proven with a receipt. Especially if it's a principality event. Um, and you scan those in, and in my case, I don't know if everybody else is the same way, I need you as you as a crap to sign off on the receipt, initial the receipt, or you scan it in to me, and I would prefer to have your hard copy receipt to me at some point. Uh, because I'm going to have to give them to whoever is doing our taxes, and I might need to make a copy. And best business practice, we need hard copy everything. Uh, other things that might go into this profit and loss are going to be your receipt for anything you've rented, uh, contract for anything that you've rented. Uh, copies of those things should be in your P&L. Um, one of the other things that I put specifically in a P&L that happened in Feltrust, if for whatever reason you have an event and something happens where um, the site didn't work out, or there's something bad that happens, put it on your PL. I have a PL where we have a site specifically in Ottawa that is red flag. Um, for specifically trying to take us by not giving our security deposit back. Um, that way, these profit and losses should be are public. They're always public and they're available to everybody um, after the fact. So everybody now should know in this organization that this site is specifically blacklisted by us because they tried to keep our security deposit for no reason. <laughs> you know what I mean? That way, this is the future communication kind of thing. It's just in black and white. Mm -hmm. Maybe you leave the game, but it's there now. So everybody will know, don't use that site. Because it's a piece of poop. <laughs> See, I use good words. I use good words. Yay. Um, I'm trying to think of what else is in the profit and loss. It's just such a good file. I just And it's so simple. And profit and loss is mandatory. It's not mm -hmm. something that you... Auction stuff. It's like, meh, I don't feel like doing it. Here's all my receipts in a pile in an envelope. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. We need a profit and loss. Um, as a side note, it also calculates the percentage that you would like to donate to the principality from your local event if you would like to do that. Just saying, it's like a calculator in a nice little file and printable, and it's kept in... After you're done with the profit and loss, give it to your chancellor, and they keep it in a file, and they should be keeping all those profit and losses in a file for at least seven years. Because that's how long back we can be audited. Um, would you mind mentioning um, a little bit more about the event tax thing? Just because um, it's it's something that a lot of autocrats don't know is an option, um, and don't know when to decide whether or not that that's a thing, and how to go about the process of doing that, and how much, and the stuff like that. Would you mind just kind of covering that a little bit? Sure. Um, so it was never actually officially implemented in our corpora. It was suggested in the infamous, I think, what did we pick? Corpora A or corpora B? Whatever we didn't pick, it was in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it is suggested um, that the larger parks and larger events um, donate 25% of their profit not um, whatever they made, because this is after you've paid out all of your rental fees, all of your piece of crap, all of that stuff. Whatever you have left, whatever the profit that you are putting into your treasury, um, it is suggested that at a duchy level, you donate between, we go for 25% of your profit. Um, smaller parks, um, it's usually, uh, I think at 15 to 20 for a barony, and then suggested 10 to 15 to a shire. Um, if you don't make over $100 in profit, you usually say don't bother, you probably need that money more than we do. 
Um, but this really helps facilitate the principality treasury that hopefully eventually will be called a kingdom treasury um, with which we pay for insurance and um, hopefully as a kingdom we'll be paying kingdom tax so <laughs> we need to yeah we need that kind of stuff and it would be super appreciated and most of the time we do donate it's just not a widely it's not mandatory so mm -hmm. people don't really do um, the three duchies do I don't know if it's ever been brought forward to other parts and stuff, but um, if you had any other questions about that after this talk, um, feel free to reach out and I can give you an idea of what that would look like. If you'd like to donate to the Principality Coffers, that can that can be a thing. Does that answer? Is that, a, is that enough information? Yes. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Just there's, because like, it's, it's not in our Kephora now, right, um, there's there's a yeah. lot of especially newer autocrats um, that don't know that it is a thing that they can do. Um, yeah. So just, yeah. just yeah. It's something that options. is suggested any kind of event you run. Um, and you can always fundraise for the principality. Always. That, that's the thing. I can facilitate. We have a bank account. You can e-transfer us money if you would like to help out the principality with our treasury and stuff that we facilitate your liability insurance and and other things you know yeah talk to, talk to me message me it's all good i'm always open to messages it's all good Faye Wellen on facebook or no lisa on, lisa belke on, on facebook that's me <laughs> it's all good i will talk about profit and loss all day <laughs> and excel we just have um, a, a screen. I think that Three, I was covering later. the profit. <laughs> yeah, I was covering the profit and loss. Dennis, were you covering the other thing? What was the other thing? Oh. Ah, yes. Receipts and accountability. Receipts and accountability. Bills and, like, oh yeah. Distributed yeah. bills. Yeah. Yeah. You were doing yeah. the, the late bills and disputed bills, which if you do a profit and loss, you should have all of those <laughs> things to know that you have paid everything off because you should have a yeah. receipt for everything that you are entering in the profit and loss. But let's say, for whatever reason, you don't. Yeah. Um, okay. So there are times where um, equipment gets broken or damaged, and uh, <laughs> your rental businesses are going to start questioning and discussing how much is owed, or if you had an agreement with them and they decide to give you a bill which was higher than what you had agreed upon, you're going to have to take the time to discuss that. And Keep in mind, Faye Wellen had said four weeks to get that profit and loss in. Um, you can put it in a profit and loss and amend it later uh, because whatever the disputed bill is, keep it out. Or if you've already paid some, put represent how much money you have already contributed to this and then talk about the change later. Um, I don't think there's a single park around that would... Um, hang out to dry if you had to um if the if the bill wound up being higher because something got damaged by one of the players that attended or or if um the business wants to go ahead and bill is higher than they estimated i don't think there's a park that would be like oh too late your profit your profit and loss is already closed too bad for you we win um <laughs> But you do have to take the time to resolve those because you are acting on behalf of your park and you should be acting in good faith to make sure that you are safeguarding those park those park dollars. You have to make sure that when you when you see these discrepancies, you talk to them. You you talk to the businesses. Um I've had them and I, I pull out the estimate that I got originally and I say, Okay, so we had agreed on twelve hundred you are now saying 16. Can we talk about that? And it, the calculators come out, the discussions come out. And sometimes it's a legislation change that went through in like the three months since you booked it, or it's something that you're not going to find a way around. Sometimes they just go, oh, sorry, we didn't realize we had an agreement that went through before X date, and it's on our old building. Let, let's get that corrected. And, and then I submit the receipt, and everything was fixed. Um, but it is you who has, you as the autocrat have to have the fiscal responsibility and to safeguard your park's money. They, 
all the players at your park have put their faith in you that you will do the right thing, that you will be responsible, and you will take care to not frivolously go, whatever, it's Wolven Fang's money, and, and hand it out to everybody. Um, I can amend that, that. Or not amend, but like, same story of what I just sort of talked about with the, the place that was blacklisted. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, this is a learning thing for everybody else because we didn't handle it properly. Um, it got to the point where um, they stopped communicating with us. Um, and we didn't get paid back for, I think it was seven months, and it required um, it required the autocrat to hand it off to me, where I started using some pretty harsh language towards this um, site uh, to get our money back. Um, and uh, immediately, because of the liability insurance, it was under, like we had an insurance certificate for them, uh, this is my bad, um, I should have immediately brought it to the board instead of trying to take it on myself. Um, yeah, it should have been brought to the CEO. So if you have an issue with a site or a rental company or something that is withholding funds from you, uh, that could be possibly a legal thing, uh, immediately bring it to the BOD. <laughs> Even if you're on the BOD, bring it to the BOD. Could I, could I just put a little caveat on that one? Yeah. Approach the business first and discuss it with them. Yes. When okay, they give you so the firm, no, then bring it up. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. They try, try to resolve at lowest level. Yeah, this was after <laughs> six months of back and forth of them dicking us around, um, basically, and not, like, I think they sent the check to somebody else. They kept sending it to the wrong people, even though we kept correcting them, and it took, like, seven months for them to get the proper check, and, like, I called this lady... And I wasn't very nice at this point, so I was like, this is the third one, you're sending it to the wrong address, I'm going to come pick it up now, like, right now. You're going, oh, but it's our busiest week. I'm like, I don't give a sh who, you've been doing this for seven months, we want our money back. 18 plus. <laughs> <laughs> and so they did, they ended up sending it to the right address, which is good. They said, we don't want you to come here, please don't come here. And I'm like, that's fine. That's fine. Send it as long as I get it in the right address. It's fine. We got it with the right address, and now the profit and loss is literally has like a nice red, almost like a red highlighter type thing. Uh, site blacklisted for um, just being unprofessional. It sucks because it was a beautiful site, but like they were unprofessional crap. You agree, don't you? <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, meow. <laughs> and the cat has spoken. Um, yeah. <laughs> something about that profit and loss in the blacklist. So if you get um, the Wolven Fang one, or you get uh, a copy of the Felfrost one, ideally they're identical. Uh, they might yeah. not be, but don't don't delete um, oh, any yeah. of the blacklists that are on there, because you never know if you hand that off to someone who's going to run a principality event up here in Sudbury or in Ottawa or Peterborough or Toronto, and they're going through looking for sites. They might come across that same site and go, oh, look at beautiful grounds. And now here we are. Felfrost already knew that was a problem site. But because we deleted that information off the sheet. Now well, here we are. We're going to have to, at the principality level, go through the same, through the same uh, hoops to get our money back. So the way the, the profit and loss sheet actually works is um, you start from scratch on every profit and loss sheet it doesn't mm -hmm. copy over like keep, keep going 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 and the same no. profit and loss um so it's a new sheet every time but every time you do fill out that sheet you should be saving that copy under the name of event date date whatever profit and loss mm -hmm. and that needs to be uploaded to a file section and made available to everybody profit and loss mm -hmm. are transparent and should be posted all the time like yeah. th there's no reason for it not to be um, unless there's some, like, always, if, so if you're, you're, if somebody's mm -hmm. renting, uh, like, the site under their name, obviously black out their address if they don't want it public. Um, I personally mm -hmm. have, like, paid for it with my credit card and then gotten paid back, so that would be blacked out. But, mm -hmm. yeah, always be mindful also of what information you're posting online. But, yeah. Is, isn't there a page on the profit and loss for blacklists? For blacklists? I, I thought there was a section. I thought there was a page on a sheet on the profit and loss for blacklists. 
No, I haven't. I just, I might have sent you the one that had a blacklist oh, okay. on it when um, I went from scratch. Um, as a side note, I think Ken would be remiss if I didn't mention this. Do not edit the front page. You, There's no reason for you to input anything on the front page. Page, did you edit the front page, Dennis? Dennis, don't edit the front page. <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything I mean, that bills, there's giant red letters that say do not enter numbers on the first page. All of the tabs calculate onto the first page for you. It's literally just inputting information. It will auto-populate so you don't change stuff on the front page. All I did none was change Felfrost to Wolvenfang. That's all I did. Okay, that's different. That's... You didn't change the formula. <laughs> okay, you didn't input this was my total because that will auto populate. Don't put in numbers on the front. You can change it from self to the whole thing. That's different. Don't change formula. Yeah. We'll lock the form. We'll lock the formulas <laughs> on the sheets we send you guys. So <laughs> if for whatever reason you decide to change the formulas and uh, you screwed up, message me and I'll help you fix it. If you don't know itself, but you should know itself because Excel is useful. <laughs> Go find your local chancellor. They should probably know Excel like the back of their hand. It, it's like the yep. primary tool we use. Yep. Excel is useful. <laughs> okay, now I'm done with profit and loss. We were on to you, I think, still. And then I brought I... it back, and I'm horrible. I told you I could talk for an hour about profit and loss. Oh yeah, I'm we can horrible. go on. receipts, accountability, <laughs> liability, Three the responsibility, <laughs> taxation. We we can go all, all night. Oh, yeah. We're both we're both chancellors, so yeah. Um, this is a big part I of the job. <laughs> yeah, on a, like also yeah, right. Receipts um, are important. On a, another side of of this, right? Um, knowing your strengths and weaknesses, thing, right? Uh, I have a learning disability. Uh, I can't do all the numbers stuff, right? So I always get assistance with my P&Ls. Um, I'm the one that has to present it. I have to, you know, put all the numbers in. I need to, you know, put my, you know, my sign of approval on that. And I need to, to post that information and make that visible. Um, but doing the calculations and, and finding out all those numbers, I get massive assistance with because I do have a learning disability. So that's not something that I can just do myself. Um, so it is important that if there are things like that, that you, you have, you know, either it's the disability or just you have a hard time doing, um, or just a lack of knowledge on how to do it, ask, ask for help, figure it out. Right. Um, don't just go, I don't really know how it's done. So I'm just not going to do it. Right. Like this is a liability yeah. thing. This is a tax thing. This is a legal thing. You have to do this. You <laughs> like, don't. Oh, gosh, yeah, I just, it's horror stories. I just hear horror stories. Um, be, be transparent, right? Um, yeah. And, and, you know, uh, your, your park needs to know if, if you, if you got them money or lost them money through this event, right? Um, also, that should be known about you, period, as an autocrat. Um, because if, if you have a reputation of losing money every single time, that you do a thing, um, they have the right to know that for in the future when they are deciding whether or not when you put in bid that, you know, whether or not you are somebody that is reliable and has the best interests um, for the park and that you are fiscally responsible. Um, because if, if you have proven time and time again that you cannot um, break even, even, um, that's a huge issue and number one you should be finding solutions to that if you attempt to autocrat again um that's a huge thing you should be being fiscally responsible and getting aid and asking for advice on how to fix that in the future don't just keep on going ah well it's good enough because it's not um this is how this is how treasuries get emptied this is how you don't get to have these big events in the future um like especially when you know we're talking about principality stuff uh in the future if we are so lucky to become a kingdom one day right we have liability insurance we have two thousand dollars a year for ai um right the liability insurance is like twelve hundred dollars um 
then there's uh higher higher and it gets higher, higher every year it's, every year it gets higher um so it's like 2700 oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 1200 is what the what the uh what the park contributed this year that and yes. Prince yeah. Charlie contributed 16 we want to get to a so, point or, to or where 1600 to where the treasury is sound enough that doesn't have to dip into parks things right but yeah. that's not going to happen if they keep losing money every time they run an event right that's not going to happen if if you know the parks aren't going to be able to you know put in for that uh, you know remainder amount if they don't have sound treasuries right um <laughs> and just because you have it now doesn't say. mean you're going to have it later and it's going to be expenses right um also isn't like uh, we have to be able to afford sending whoever the monarch of the time is to to the gathering events. Crowns. Um, to clan? Yeah. Right? Uh, it's like, called crowns now. Yeah. Um, there's lots of expenses that, that I don't think folks really... S that come with kingdoms, right? And if, if that's our goal one day, we, we have to be sound. We have to be ready for that. Um, and all if, of the parts... If we want to be a to, kingdom. Yeah. If we want to be a kingdom, we have to make that money somewhere. Events, um, don't, we don't want to make events about being a for-profit thing. This isn't, you shouldn't be coming to this table looking at it going, I'm here to make money. But we have to realize that we don't have many fundraising options. And it's a reality of saying, do we want to be a kingdom? Yes. What are we willing to do to, what are we willing to do to get there? If it's not run good profitable events to pay the bills and keep the lights on and keep everyone insured to play where are we going to do that i don't have the money um i personally don't have the money i i don't know if the admiral happened to happen to win the lottery i would um not the last time i checked we need <laughs> we need to well actually i haven't checked my tickets for this week yet i might have um but uh we need to recognize that we have responsibilities um and that kingdom is not uh just a name tag it's not just a, a label there are responsibilities and things we have to do when we get there to keep it and running solvent or or profitable events is one of those things and you as the autocrat are responsible for making that happen and there's a lot of little steps that go into that, like your communication, developing new crats, building relationships and with suppliers and crats and players, and advertising. You are a very pivotal part of uh, the the big machine that keeps AmpGuard going. Um, now, with that said, uh, before I toss this to Lisa, sorry, you had <laughs> you to say. Um, now, with all that in mind, the principality has what they need right now right right now we don't have those super thousands of dollars um that we need currently right so um we've been doing well um it's one of those prep for the future things um that that we need to look to right um when when we are in a situation that we need that then um right having um the tax will, will definitely help and also right um, a big thing that we have right now is that a lot of our treasuries are super solid. And when we deal with things like liability insurance, right, the parks are contributing. We're all putting in together, right? Um, up, up here, we have sort of this almost like a, a community, you know, um, sort of treasury thing to where it's like if the principality ever needs anything, right? The three duchies especially um, are really sound, um, so we're we're good in that. But you know, if if you if you run a whole bunch of events that lose money, then all of a sudden the that's not going to be there to then help with those larger um, things when we all of a sudden have larger things we need to deal with. So just future stuff, future proof this, Lisa. So. <laughs> I was just going to go back to the um, what you had said, where it's like, if you consistently lose money on events, um, we, can, we can dock you for that. Um, this is where your 
profit and loss and transparency can really help you because it's totally a possibility that one event gets shut down by a tornado. The next event, it something happens and nobody shows up. You know what I mean? And it could be completely out of your control. But this is what the profit and loss is for, is documenting. So then we know why, yeah. right? Um, it could literally not be your fault if you're running a bunch of events yep. that are just not making profit. But this is how we fix them, right? This is how we put steps in place to be like, okay, well, this event didn't make money last year because of this. So we need to, this year, fix up account for that, et cetera. Just so then, like, because we're not looking to specifically blame one person oh, for, yeah, for, for all sure. of the losses and stuff like that, right? It's never just one person. There's always a Correct. confluence of events that something happens. Most of the time, we do make money. Um, most of the time, we at least break even. Uh, but, yeah, I just wanted to say, this is another reason why you do profit and loss. Uh, so, because you will be held accountable, if there's no information, there's literally nowhere else to look except for the auto crash, yes. right? And then at that point, you know, it, it's in your best interest. Document everything and explain it, yes. right? Stop eating my paper. She's hitting my <laughs> nose. <laughs> Complete the mission. Eat the paper. <laughs> She literally, like, it's kitten confetti. That's what I call it. She eats paper and then spits it out. She doesn't eat, like, eat it. She just tears it up into little bitty pieces and makes kitten confetti everywhere what? in my house. She eats homework. It's horrible. She's adorable. I've heard my dog, ate, my dog ate my dog ate my homework, but I didn't hear about my cat ate my homework. <laughs> no, mine, like, oh, wow. What? <laughs> yeah. No, she straight up, she eats, like, she turns the paper into confetti. Wow. Yeah, As an autocrat, if you have an issue with your with your pet eating important documents, make sure that uh, they don't have access to those. An important random tip for autocrats. <laughs> I have one, specifically. She's eaten profit and losses before. I've had oh. to read them so straight up, she had oh, attendance sheets when I was when I was local chancellor. Half of them don't have corners anymore because I would throw them on the couch when I got home from field, and then she's just like, "Ooh, paper! I will turn that into confetti for you here." Oh Festive. So. So okay, if we that. Holy thank you for, for the next Ampard wedding it. though, mm -hmm. for the next Ampard wedding though, I need to borrow your cat. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna. Need <laughs> Put a stack of paper down, and we'll have confetti to throw. Confetti. I mean, it might take her a while, and it'll be wet. But <laughs> did you hear oh, that? Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. You want to see Trey? Trey? Oh, no, it's a cat. No, that's Trey. <gasps> We're talking yeah. about your kitten Hello. confetti. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling left out. I don't have any pets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think that's uh, that's the entirety of autocrat. That's autocrat. Four hours of condensed autocrat. <laughs> we're. I know we're going to get questions over the week, and we're going to have to review this next week and and go sure. back through sure. part of it. For sure. Again, but twenty second delay. The, this is your last opportunity to throw us any questions that you may have. Um, but we are wrapping up. <laughs> thank you for sticking in there for those that have watched, and also thank you to anyone in the future that, that watches this video or the future videos to come. So thank you for that. <laughs> I, I am going to try to get a written copy of this down so that it's a little bit faster, easier to scan and find what you're looking for. Perfect. I promise I'll try. Um, not that I'll succeed, but I'll try. And I'm sorry... If I sound like a, a doom and gloom thing at any point during this, um, I don't mean to be... Autocrat is fun to do. It's great to do. Just remember, there are responsibilities at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just feel there's times it's, where I'm like, ah! No, it's, it's important to, to, to be the prepared. Only autocrats left in the principality. We We've not convinced everyone else. Events, now we're probably, stuck with again. this forever. Thanks, Dennis. No. <laughs> Well, hey, I need to get a knighthood somewhere, you know. Just uh, keep doing it until I get one. 
<laughs> Why we can't have nice things. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think that is about it. So we'll wrap up now. Um, oh, any last remarks? Any last tidbits before we close this up? <laughs> I hope you appreciate this. I went three hours without a cigarette. We do appreciate it. You appreciate I'm dying. It. <laughs> I'm dying. And up. if you have any questions about Excel or or or, or that stuff or, or whatever, if you need help filling out your profit and loss, I will teach you. <laughs> if you need to, Dennis will teach you, right, Dennis? Because I taught Dennis. Absolutely. Well, I didn't need to teach Dennis, I gave him the file and he knew. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess. If you. The... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. If anyone watching this ever sees me at an event and you need help. I, I don't care what the fire is. I'll give you a hand. I, <laughs> feel free to ask for help. <laughs> yes. I think that really, uh, any of us, I think, would, you know, are there. If you need us, we'll, we'll be there to help. Um, again, right, uh, if you have questions, please let any of us know. Um, and, yeah, just uh, if, if you ever are doing this in the future, remember, right, keep up that communication. Um be the leader that that you would like for yourself um and um prepare have the knowledge if you don't have it obtain it um work together remember that that this is a, a team thing um and that you know it's not a lone wolf thing so make sure that you work together uh keep up that communication and um and I, I wish you the best of luck in the future if you ever do end up running an event. Um, you got this. <laughs> okay? Um, with we believe that, in you! We believe, future person watching this, you got this. <laughs> um, again, thank you so very much for, for attending this. This has been event planning. Apparently, one. <laughs> uh, this has been the autocrat section of this series. Um, we will be doing the other crap positions um, in the next week or two. Um, so please stay tuned for those. Again, thank you so very much for anyone that has stayed with us for this extremely long class. Um, and thank you to anyone that's viewing this in the future. Again, um, I've been Admiral Ann Cash, which is Admiral. Um, my guests. Uh, Countess Faye Wellen and Dark Lord Darian. Thank you so very much for, for doing this with me. You guys are amazing. Um, a heck of a team. I appreciate it. And our kitties. <laughs> Always the kitties. Kitties for help. <laughs> um, so at that, I will end the stream. Again, thank you so very much for coming. Till next time. Uh, take care of each other and uh, be safe.